everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Francesca. Welcome back to Small City Plants. And Bowie is welcoming you too. Yeah! Another day. Another puppy in a video. Hi, folks. Mwah. Okay. I came home from work like an hour or so ago, had some dinner, and I just I'm decided to tackle a problem which I uncovered last night. If head and hands does not clue you in, I found some pests in one of my greenhouse cabinets. I found it in my Millsbo. I think I mentioned when I was leaving for vacation or potentially when I came back that I noticed some root mealies on a plant. Yeah, it, it's on multiple plants. And I know which what the source plant is. It is this Hoya Hutchkiliana outer variegated. It is a beautiful plant, but it has always struggled with root mealies. And now it's spread to, I think I, I have five plants here and I'm gonna unpot them, treat them, try and get rid of the root mealies today. And I'm also going to, for every other plant in the cabinet, I'm going to do a preventative treatment as well. So I'm gonna talk through that whole process and how I treat for root mealies. It's not foolproof root mealies can be difficult to get rid of, but when I have had root mealies in this cabinet and when I've had them uh, just on individual plants, this has worked generally the best for me to get rid of them. Let's just, let's do it. <laughs> I think I actually want to start with the plants that I don't think have as bad infestations and we'll see how it goes. One of them is this beautiful Hoya Tequila Sunrise. Look at that sun stressed color. It is such a beautiful plant. And I just saw one root mealy actually moving on one of the roots. So I don't think this one is heavily infested at all but we're gonna unpotter, we're gonna clean the vessel. And next to me here, I have a bowl. It probably looks like it's just water, but it is water with hydrogen peroxide in it. Now I'm using a very heavy duty strength hydrogen peroxide, just diluted down. But most commonly, I believe what you get is 3% hydrogen peroxide solution if you're just buying it like a grocery store or something. And if you're using that and you have a heavy infestation, I personally go pretty strong. I would go like a one to five ratio of hydrogen peroxide to water. If you're using higher concentration hydrogen peroxide, then dilute it accordingly. I also have with me some rubbing alcohol and some water alcohol solution. And those will be if I see any root mealies or any mealy bugs just on the leaves or on the plant in general to get rid of them. I also used this diluted water and alcohol solution. And I think this is one to 10 again of rubbing alcohol to water. And I just sprayed it all over my plants in that cabinet, uh, in the Millsbo cabinet in my plant room. I sprayed it all over them the moment the grow lights went out last night. I did that so that root mealies hopefully wouldn't climb out of the substrate or onto the plant and spread around in case there are some in there. And I did it late at night when the grow lights are going out because if you put alcohol on the leaves of your plant when lights are on, it can contribute to really significant leaf burn. There still might be some burn on there, but the amount of burning in my opinion is okay compared to the prospect of continuing to have mealy bugs. So first off, my Hoya Tequila Sunrise. So I'm going to be sanitizing all of this substrate and all of the pots, cleaning them out, boiling the pond, etc, etc. I have my scissors here sanitized with rubbing alcohol and while I'm here I'm just going to trim off any root rot. There is one mealy, is that a mealy bug? No, that's perlite. Sometimes it can be really hard to tell what's a mealy bug and what's perlite. The best way to tell is poke it and see if it moves. So I know this had a root mealy because I saw a root mealy crawling about last night. Also a bonus of clear vessels. You can see what's going on with the roots. But it's not ideal all the time. 
and nothing's foolproof. We're, we all get pests. If you don't have pests, you haven't had pests yet, or you don't have pests that you're aware of. I'm going to just trim off these rottedy roots. It's just a couple because I transferred it from soil into pond. It's totally normal. It has a lot of healthy roots as well. Pretty happy with it. And I am going to take a cutting of the plant. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to propagate. So I've taken a cutting of my tequila sunrise. And I'm going to propagate that. So I'm going to put that to one side away from everything else because there are no mealy bugs on that. This I'm just going to pop into the water. There we go. And I'll keep an eye, something to keep an eye of when you're doing this method of putting the plant root system into water and hydrogen peroxide is you want to keep an eye and see if any mealy bugs crawl up to the rest of the plant while they're trying to escape the peroxide. So when you're doing this, make sure you check the whole plant before you pot it back up again, just to make sure nothing is like run away and is trying to escape. So that's one done. Next one that I don't think is that bad, fingers crossed, is this uh, Hoya soydawensis, which is such a good bloomer for me, by the way. I don't think I've taken a lot of pictures of it blooming because I've been so busy, but next time it blooms, I will show you because really easy bloomer. And the leaves are so like interesting, very cardboardy again, but not like the Codata, but like the Codata. It's interesting. So I'll also be, Sanitizing plant tags. Mealybugs can live anywhere, and I'm checking plant clips. Mealybugs like the crevices. I don't see any mealies on the plants. I only found one mealybug on an actual plant leaf yesterday when I was doing this and it was on that Hoya Hutchkiliana outer variegated and it was a baby it looked like and it was at the base it looked like it had crawled out um so that's something I guess let me take the trellis out again sanitized trellis a wipe down And let's take this out. I wasn't sure whether this one had anything. I don't see any root mealies. Oh, I see one. I see one. <gasps> there it is. I see one, two, three, four. Once you see one, you start to see them all. Five, yep, yeah, this one's got root mealies. I'd put it close to the camera, but I don't want them to spread and fall about. If you want to know what a root mealy looks like, look it up. It's gross. They gross. Again, sanitizing. And because I'm propagating and taking, doing all of this, I'm going to take a cutting of this one as well. I think I'll take a cutting right here and put it to the side. Next up, this one breaks my heart because it was one of my favorites and this makes sense for why it hasn't been growing. It's my Hoya Chicken Farm, such a beautiful plant. This plant, a, a key way to know if you have root mealies is the plant's not growing and the leaves start dying off. It can be root rot, but it can also be a sign of root mealies. So really look at like your recent growth and see what's going on. Plant clips. And I'm going to spray all these with alcohol as well, but I'm just giving them a visual check. Trellis. Spray them all with alcohol after. What cutting could I take of this? 
because I've got so many like aerial roots and peduncles. I want at least a couple leaves on this. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it so there's one leaf on it. That's a cutting. So many aerial roots, like unbelievable. <laughs> and no mealy bugs. Something else with root mealies is they really like to exist at the very bottom of the root ball. By the time they get to the top, you probably have a full-blown infestation. So for my soy dowensis, when I pulled it out, I couldn't see any, but then at the bottom, I saw them. So they're sneaky like that. I think I'm gonna take a second cutting of this. I might take it here. And I might cut this down further even. I do love a Hoya chicken farm. More chicken farm, more fun. I think that'll be good. One, two, three, four chicken farm cuttings in total. And then the base of the plant still has two, four, six leaves on it. Let's pull her out. Again, I'm not certain if this one has mealy bugs, but better safe than sorry. Perlite, root rot, All right, this one does have root mealies as well. I think I'm gonna start my chicken farm from scratch. I think I'm gonna take the risk. It's not a hard to get plant anymore, so I can replace it if needed. But I think I'm just gonna discard. She gone. We're gonna start her from scratch. She was a favorite plant of mine, so I'm not super upset, actually. I'm actually feeling really good about starting it over and building a full pot, so. I don't feel bad. All right, that's good. By the way, I swear I'm not as pretentious as this looks, but uh, holiday season is coming. I happen to celebrate Christmas. Uh, non-religiously, but it's just how I was raised. It's the holiday that I tend to celebrate. Uh, and I have a lot of traditions associated with it, especially uh, being from England. I'm from the UK. Got rid of my accent, but I am. And one of those traditions for me and my family was always like a glass of sherry around the holidays. And now with it approaching, I'm just, I'm enjoying sherry so, so much. And I was gifted a little set of sherry glasses. So gotta make use of them, right? I don't wanna be that person. Not that this person's a bad person. I feel like this person is every other person on the street. But you know when you have all of these like fancy plates and fancy glasses, when you're currently my age, most of them are gifts because you can't really generally afford to get them yourself. But you have all these nice things and you just kind of put them away in a cupboard and you don't use them. And I don't want to do that. Like if I have these things, I want to get use of them out of them. I want to get joy out of them. I just, yeah, I don't like the idea of locking fancy things away and not using them. I want to, I want to enjoy what I have. So yeah, anyway, side note. Next up, I'm going to look at my Hoya 
Forbesii, another beautiful plant that has not grown much. Dip, dip. Clip, looks fine. And it has such a long tendril. It probably needed to be cut anyway. Who am I kidding? Eek. Let's just cut that tendril. Oh, that's not even that tendril. I have two tendrils. Okay, so that tendril's cut regardless. It's a shame this one's actively growing. I don't really want to cut it, but it's so long. Like, it goes on, I swear this is probably like 60 centimeters, like 24 inches in length. I think I'm just going to cut it. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I know a lot of people say you shouldn't cut Hoya tendrils, and I want to add some nuance to that. You can absolutely cut Hoya tendrils. It's not a bad thing to do, but what it's going to do is it's going to activate lower growth points. So if you want bushier growth, cut the tendrils. But if you want to get that trailing plant, or if you want to get peduncles, do not cut the tendril. So there's two sides there, which is good to keep in mind, depending on what your goals are for your Hoyas. Again, I'm going to propagate this. I think this one might be harder to propagate, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll find out, won't we? Just got a pile of Hoya cuttings over to my side. I'll cut there too. Trellis. And plant. Oh, it's not even filling out this pot. By the way, the reason that a lot of my Hoyas have root rot is because of that incident in September where I kind of didn't do much and I was feeling low and very busy with work. And so a lot of my Hoyas dried out and then I just watered them and they got rotted because they had dry rot and then root rot. So I'm just cutting off excess rotty roots right now. I'm not upset about how this looks. I don't think this has root mealies which is good because it was on the other side of my cabinet. The only reason I pulled it is because this particular plant uh, hadn't been growing much. So I'm like, let's check it out. This one does not have root mealies. Hey! <laughs> uh, and here's a close up of it because I don't think a lot of people have this Hoya, uh, but I think it's really, really beautiful. It also has kind of a fuzzy back to the leaves, so. That's pawn on the floor. What else is new? I'm still gonna dunk it in here because now it's been around all these plants. Who knows if it has little um, eggs in there. Better to treat it. Last but not least, the source, the problem child, my Hoya Fichkiliana. Now this is so not what I intended to do with my night today. I was gonna chill, watch some Vampire Diaries because I'm getting back into that again edit a video. I guess I'll just have to rush through it all tomorrow. So this is interesting. Only one root mealy is left on the roots that have grown out of the pot. Yesterday when I found it, there were about 15. Hey, that's my pond, not yours. So I immediately washed it off just in water to try and get rid of some and just flooded the plant. But from there, I haven't done much. Also so much new growth. So it's not following my mental model of what Hoyas with root mealies are like, because usually I find they just die. There they are. Ew. Ew. Okay. Again, I'm not showing you because I don't want them to go everywhere. Right in there.
And you can actually watch this and you can see the mealybugs like float up. It's really, really gross. So, you know. And I'm gonna let these sit in here for probably 15 minutes. Some of them are probably already done but because I've kept adding, I just wanna leave them all in there. The root mealies, ew, they're so gross. And because I'm being extra, extra thorough, once these have finished soaking, I'm gonna rinse them off with tap water and I'm gonna spray some of this water solution onto the roots, uh, this water alcohol solution. Again, one to 10 approximately. For the plants that are in the cabinet that um, I, I dug around a bit in the soil, I looked at new growth and I couldn't see any evidence of root mealies. I also picked up the pots, looked at the bottom because as I said, they like to be at like the bottom of the pot. I could not see root mealies on them, but you never know in such a tight environment like a greenhouse cabinet. So I am going to put hydrogen peroxide and water into a watering can and I'm going to bring all of those plants to the sink and water through with that mixture so it all drains out. I don't think that any are in no drainage, but for the ones that are, I will water into the pot and then tip out the hydrogen peroxide water solution. Alcohol is the best way to destroy mealybugs that are actually on the plant and on the roots, but alcohol can have more negative consequences for the root ball. So in my opinion, opinion, hydrogen peroxide is a good solution because in small enough doses, it'll be toxic to the mealybugs that will, in a short amount of time, give your plant a little oxygen boost, boost on the roots. It might damage some of the roots, but it will not be as deteriorous as just using rubbing alcohol as you would on the leaf. Now, I think that's all that I was going to say. I think that's it. You, they're just floating around. You, it's working. I can tell you right now it's working. Let me bring the camera over and see if I can get this to focus. And then after that, I'll take a break and we'll do something with these cuttings. Now some of this is perlite, but clumps, like that clump on the surface, the thing next to it, those are all mealybugs just floating off up the root ball. Again, you wanna keep an eye and see if any climb up onto the leaves. So I'll be taking an extra special look at that. Oh, there's a big one floating around. Overall, I found this process really helpful. It's not foolproof, it, doesn't, it isn't guaranteed, but I found it's the best thing that's worked for me with as little of damage as possible to my plants. So, that's that. Be back in a bit. Okay, it is about two hours later. Uh, cuttings have calloused. I have watered through all of the greenhouse cabinet with that hydrogen peroxide water solution. Couldn't find anything that looked suspicious except for my jungle cactus, one of them. It's my Lepismium hualteanum. I'm not gonna show it because it's over there. I don't wanna get it near these. But when I poured the hydrogen peroxide through it, I saw a lot of stuff moving around. And while some of it was um, springtails, which is totally ha healthy, some of it was not. And it was near another jungle cacti that had root mealies, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, that I dealt with ages ago. So maybe that's the source. I want to take it out of its pot and look at it, but I don't have the time or the mental energy to do it tonight. For context, I'm filming this on a Thursday night after a full day in the office commuting, and I have a full day in the office tomorrow, so... The love we have for our plants knows no bounds. My cats have also just eaten, but as always, they're hungry and scavenging. You don't get to see Mandu a lot. This is Mandu. She's a baby. She's older than Bowie. She's grumpier than Bowie. And we love her lots. She looks really upset and stuff. She honestly isn't. She'll be 
all over me asking for cuddles later. She's a very sweet girl. She's everyone's favorite when they come over because Bowie hides because he's very scared and nervous. And Mandu just runs up to strangers. She's so sweet. Very bad with stranger danger though. Anyway, what was I saying? So yeah, I'm gonna look at that one later, another tie when I have the energy. But the cuttings of calloused, everything else looks okay. And I've cleaned off all of the roots on the, uh, on the plants that I took all the cuttings from. Oh my gosh, I'm getting tired. Okay. Here I have a box of perlite. This is going to be my little prop box. Not everything's going to fit in there. I'm going to put the rest into this container. But in here, let's start. So I have two cuttings and I'm going to do another check for any mealies. But I have two cuttings from my soy dowensis. Just gonna lay those on the top. I have two cuttings from my Hutchkiliana alba marginata. One small, one very, very long. And this one already has some good aerial roots. This one will probably root very quickly. I have four cuttings from my Forbesy eye. But I'm only gonna put three Forbesy eye cuttings in here and I have two Tequila Sunrise cuttings but I'm only gonna put one in here. Because this I'm going to put a lid on so it's going to be high humidity, but this one of course is not going to have a lid and just live in a greenhouse cabinet. So I want to maximize my odds here. My chicken farm is where the real cuttings are. <laughs> like, look at all these aerials. This is... I'm wondering if I can wrap it. I don't think it's worth it to try to wrap it. I think I might cut this down again and put the top part in as a wet stick and I'll put the bottom part elsewhere. But these ones, I have one, two, three, four, five chicken farm cuttings and I'm gonna put all of these into this little container. took a couple of cuttings from my Hoya Hachikiliana, just normal variegated, the inner variegated one. So pretty. And I did that because it was right next to the Albo Marginata. And even though I couldn't see signs of root mealies or mealies, I just love this plant and I don't want to risk ruining, uh, losing it. So there we go. That's my little propagation bin. It's very small. There's a lot in there. But I think this is the best way or the best chance I have to move forward. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I will put the plants that were treated. I'll just put them back into a pond mix and keep an eye on them. I'm not going to keep them isolated any longer because nothing will survive that and I have inspected every inch of it. If the mealy root mealies come back, it's likely from another plant where they move to even with the treatments. Um, root mealies are kind of an ongoing, they're not ongoing, uh, you can definitely get rid of them, but root mealies are one of those things that I think don't overly freak out about unless it's on every single plant, then you might want to consider getting some industrial strength stuff. I'm not sure what that would be. But in general, root mealies, they're kind of gross. It's a good opportunity to propagate. It's a good opportunity to inspect your plants, to clean your cabinets, to clean your shelves. It's not a deal breaker, like ruining life altering thing for me. 
anymore, and I don't think it ever was. Root mealies are probably one of the grossest pests, in my opinion, but they're not ones that I think, oh no, I have root mealies, my collection's over, I'm not gonna sit and cry about it. I do sit and cry about some things, but root mealies are not one of them. So I hope that this video kind of helped you understand how to care for plants when you find root mealies, propagating Hoyas a little bit. These will probably take a couple weeks till I start to see roots. It usually doesn't take too long though. I'm going to keep them high humidity, keep a little reservoir of water at the bottom of both the glass and the uh, little tub, and hopefully in the future I have just really full beautiful plants because I've taken all of these cuttings and all these propagations. If you liked this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you've had root mealies and you have other treatments methods that you've used before, let me know. I'd love to maybe compare if I get them in the future. Maybe I'll try a different technique. You can also hit subscribe to stay up to date on all of my plant care, what's happening in my collection. I post new videos once a week uh, and I would love to have you join me for the journey. That's it from me, but wherever you are in the world, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye!